Hey guys, it's James here from Blueprint Lab. In today's video, we're going to run through some basic reach control features so you get the most out of your GUI when you're using it. Let's jump in. Having a look at the reach control GUI, we can already see that I've got a Reach Bravo 7 connected here. Now at this point, I'm assuming you've watched our getting started videos, and so you already know how to set up a port and connect a device successfully. Now the first thing we're going to look at here is the Reach Control Help menu. Now using your mouse, if you hover over any section in Reach Control, the Help menu will display a short description about how to use it. So this can be used when setting up your device or if you're not sure what a button does. Now you can also use this setup wizard to guide you through connecting your device and you can access the product manuals from this button. Now let's talk about obstacles in reach control. Now obstacles are no-go zones that the manipulator is not permitted to enter. So you might want to use these uh, to sort of represent the environment around the manipulator that you don't want to enter, say uh, the ROV or maybe like a thruster that's um, positioned near the arm. So you can use obstacles to sort of restrict the arm from entering that area and uh, damaging that part. So let's have a look here. I've um, got an obstacle set as the floor on this manipulator. So if I bring this joint down here, we should see that the arm is restricted in its movement. There we can see it's colliding with the obstacle. We get a little yellow collision circle appearing uh, and the arm's not gonna be able to go any lower than that. Now you can have up to four obstacles in Reach Control Pro. So you can have them as either cubes or cylinders. Now to edit them, you can simply click and drag the arrows, so you should be able to reposition by translating uh, and changing the shape by dragging like this. Uh, now you want to position these to sort of best represent the environment around the arm to avoid any of those unwanted collisions with, uh, with the environment. To remove, you can simply click on them and press remove. So the next thing we're going to take a look at is position presets. So position presets are positions that you can save anytime during your project and then you can move away from that position and you should be able to return to that exact position in the future. So many users use this for things like stowing and deploying the arm when they want to return to that familiar position uh, multiple times. So the way we've done this is jumped into Preset zero, I've hit capture at a particular point. I've also saved preset one, just so we can move between the two. And then the two moving buttons appear down here. So I can now move to preset zero by pressing and holding. And then I can move to preset one by pressing and holding. So to give another example, let's say we'll move to a new position. Uh, let's say something like this. Let's save this as preset two, click capture, and then I should be able to move away from this position and then move back to preset one, back to preset two again. Now the last thing I wanted to show you guys is how to invert the direction of a master arm joint if you notice that it's turning the manipulator the wrong way. So I've got a master arm here on the side so I can control the Reach Bravo with the arm, but I've noticed that this base joint down the bottom here is rotating the arm the wrong way relative to the master arm. So what I can do, I'll come into the master arm graph here, look at these joint panels. So A is referring to the end of the arm, so that's jaws, and then B, C, D, E, F, G flows all the way through the joints, and G is our base, so that's the one I'm looking at here. Now if I push this button here, it will negate the direction, and then if I wake up the master arm, we're now moving in the correct direction. Thanks for watching today's video, guys. Tune in next time.